And when Simeon comes for Sir Michael's lunch, give him this letter. Yes, Your Ladyship. <laughs> oh, and there's this letter for him also. Oh. It's becoming quite a thing, these letters from England. I reckon the squire's in love. You're a cheeky blighter, Simeon. Well, don't nobody laugh no more at Bratley. Or are you all too scared of that loony up in the attic? Shh, Simeon. Oh, don't worry, Annie. Nothing to be scared of, as long as I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> Wagon load, Jan. Yes, sir. It looks like it's going to be a good vintage. I hope so. Bratley needs it. Oh, they've got to be bad years, sir. Yes, I know, Jan. But the Bratleys have had a run of bad years. Perhaps you should let Aya Cut make you up a good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> Take more than Aya Cut's magic spells to change the fortunes of the Bratleys. Here's a letter for you, Sir Michael. Oh. Can I have the stamps when you're done, sir? Hmm? Yes, of course. Don't let them drink too much tonight, Jan. No, sir, I won't. Your lunch, Sir Michael. Oh, you have it. I may see you later at the party. Well, then. What are you shaking your head for? I don't know how you can be so happy. He's got a loony for a brother. I saw him in the woods this morning. There was something in a sack. And it was alive. You better keep your mouth shut if you want to keep your job. But... Not only me. The folks say Mr. Breck's fooling around with magic up there. They're more scared of him than they are of that old witch. I a cat.
Danny coming to the party, Sir I don't know, Sir Michael. She's supposed to. But if I was you, my lad, I'd go and find her. Enough now, Annie. Come on. Simeon? Give it to me, Lena. From what and from whom are you trying to protect me? Witchcraft's forbidden a brattling, Lena. You know that. Evil got to be fought with evil. There is no evil at Brattling Isle. Not anymore.
Oh no. Simeon? Must have been Saracen. Huh? Why? Why? What's this do turn killer, sir? Oh. Uh, I'm getting back to the house. Quickly. That's what spooked Saracen. Snake will spook any horse. They kicked on the door. No. Someone let him out. Deliberately. I want him found, Jan. Quickly. And get rid of this, will you? Yes, sir. Mother, Mary Ann has consented to marry me. Is that what the letter was about? Yes. But it's been more than a year since you last saw her, and then only for a short time in London. How do you know she hasn't changed? We love each other, that's all we need to know. You, Breck, and I are the last of the Bradleys. We should make sure there will be no more. If you marry this girl, you will only be adding another tragedy to the history of Bradley. It's because of Breck that you don't want to hear, isn't it? What do you suggest we do with him? Brush him under a carpet like unsightly dirt? Breck is my brother. I love him as much as you do. Mother, can't you see? He's sick and needs proper care. He's a Bradley as much as you or me. He has a right to stay here as long as he lives. It's Mary Ann who has no right here. I'm afraid I have some rather bad news. Michael. No, not Sir Michael. Break. His brother. 
It appears that a runaway stallion that killed a man six weeks ago attacked Breck while he was out on a walk. Oh, no. I'm sorry I had to bring you such distressing news. Did you know Breck, Doctor? He was an undergraduate while I was at Dublin. I only met him once or twice after he qualified, and that was many years ago in London at a medical conference. I believe he returned to the Cape shortly after that, gave up his practice in London. Michael never mentioned that his brother was a doctor. He had some rather extraordinary ideas which he published, but I'm afraid they had a mixed reception in medical circles. Oh, why was that? He believed the soul was an organic entity which could be isolated and kept alive outside and independent of the human body. The time has passed most pleasantly, thanks to you, Dr. Collinson. I do hope you have a pleasant stay with the degrees. Dr. Collinson? Yes? Mr. Hurd sent me to meet you, sir. Ah, my bags are over there. I'll be with you in a minute. Don't worry, Miss Carew. If Sir Michael doesn't arrive, I can always drop you on my way to the Defruits farm. I'm sure he'll be here soon. Will you excuse me while I look for my luggage? Yes. That one and that one. Yes, sir. Dr. Collinson. My pleasure, Miss Carew. Marianne. Hello. Dearest. Oh, well, this is Dr. Collinson. He's been my guardian angel. How do you do? I'm very grateful to you, Doctor. He's going to visit your neighbors, the De Groots. I've asked him to come and visit us. Uh, yes, of course. We'd be delighted, Doctor. Thank you, Sir Michael. Mm. Miss Carew? Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Marianne, this is Lena. She'll be your personal maid at Brattling. How do you do, Lena? Ma'am. Come, my dear. I beg your pardon, Sir Michael. Yes? Uh, that place that's addressed to Dr. Brett. Will you take it now or have it sent for later? Uh, oh, we'll take it with us. We might as well. Um, load it up, would you? Michael? About another mile. I can hardly wait to get there. 
You're much thinner, dearest. That's one of the changes at Brackling since I wrote to you. You mean Breck's accident? You know about that. The station master told Dr. Collinson. How is he? Well, at first we thought he might die. His head was badly crushed. Oh, Michael, how awful. Your poor mother must have been very upset. She still is upset. She doted on Breck. Can't we go a little faster, Michael? I can hardly wait. Yes, of course. Get up, go on. Get up. I think it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful is hardly the word for it. The house is run down, the garden's overgrown. Well, all except for one part, which is mother's pride and joy. It's been such a long time. Remember when we talked about this day? Whoa, whoa. Yes, I remember. Whoa, whoa. But then I wasn't sure you were going to marry me. Excuse me. Michael, do you think your mother will like me? Of course she'll like you. How could anyone not like you? Welcome to Brackling. It is rather grim, isn't it? But everything will change now that you're here. Let me introduce you. This is Bland, our butler. Miss. And behind you is Annie. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Annie. Lady, will you show Miss Mary Ann to her room? My dear, when you're refreshed, I'll introduce you to Mother. Thank you, Bland. I simply will not allow you to marry this girl. You will allow whatever I say, Mother. Then you intend to go through with it, despite my wishes? Not despite anything, but because I am master of Brackling. I can hardly believe it. It seems incredible that this is Africa and not England. Cape Colony, my dear, not Africa. But if you will listen carefully, you will realize there is a difference. What is that drumming, Michael? Nothing that need concern you. You might call it the sound of Africa. You should not permit it. Your father never did. What should Michael not permit, Lady Bretley? Witchcraft. Mr. Brackenridge's train. Thank you, Bland. That will be all. You excuse me, my dear. Breck and I usually have a few moments together at this time. Can I come with you? Uh, no, Mary Ann. Michael can take the tray, and you and I will have coffee in the drawing room. It's better this way, for the moment. I shan't be long. They're very much alike, Lady Bratley. They were then. But not anymore. I'm such a blunderer. Please forgive me. Has Michael told you about the accident? Only that Breck was attacked by a stallion while out walking. He also said that Breck refuses to see anyone except you and Michael.
You both look so overwrought. Surely there's something I could do to help. This is a family matter. Michael had no right to tell you about it. But I am family. Not yet, my dear. Not yet. I love Michael, Lady Bratley, and everything that is part of him. Even if you don't care for me, you'll never change what I feel for him. Nothing will ever change that. May I turn back the bed, Miss Marianne? Yes, thank you, Nina. What's he like, Nina? Who, Miss? Mr. Breck. I haven't seen him since the accident, Miss. Nobody has. He never leaves the upper floor. Oh, how dreadful. Poor Breck. What was he like, Lena, before the accident? Did you know he was crippled, miss? Yes, Sir Michael told me. Aya Cut says he's marked by the devil. He used to play the organ sometimes late at night. We could hear down in the servants' quarters. Lonely, terrible music, like the swing. Come in. Leave us, Lena. Retiring rather early, aren't you? I don't. I don't think your mother wants me here at Bratley. Oh? Did she say that? She told me not to interfere in family matters. My well, mother's had a terrible shock. Breck is more than just a son to her. You'll have to be very patient with us, my darling. All of us. Mother, Breck, even me. Who is I, you cats? Oh, just a normal lay woman. Some people believe to have supernatural powers. Did Lena tell you about her? Yes, but why are you so angry? I'm, I'm not angry. I just don't want you listening to servants gossip, that's all. Especially from Lena. I'll speak to Mother tomorrow about a new maid for you. Oh, please don't, Michael. I like the girl. All right, my love. Good night. Well, you'll be called at 8.30. Aundo matu guru kalara na minasha, 
Minashana Kalarana, Minashana Kalarana, Minashana Kalarana. Door last night, Lena. No. And the organ music. Did you hear it? Lena. I saw Mr. Breck with my own eyes limping along the path beneath my bedroom window. Then he must be better, Miss. Lena, please trust me as I now trust you. I promise you that whatever you tell me will remain a secret between us. There's nothing to tell, Miss. I've told you everything I know. You haven't told me why, whenever you speak of Mr. Breck, you behave like a frightened child. What is it that he does or, or used to do up in that attic? Nobody knows for sure. But Ayakat says he's doing what no man has the right to do. What is Mr. Breck doing, Lena? Collecting the souls of living creatures. Lena! Lena! Good. Very good. Living in England all these years have not robbed you of your skill, I see. I used to practice on Hempstead Heath to keep up with you, Hugo. You know, 
not sorry you've given up your London practice to take up this lecturing post at the medical school, are you? Good heavens, no. I was intended to return to the colony. What makes you think that I have any regrets? Sometimes you look like a man who has a profound regret, as if he has lost something. It's the girl you met on the boat coming out, isn't it, my friend? Miss Carew is engaged to be married to Sir Michael Bradley, Hugo. Yes. But somehow I think that she's in great danger. Let's go and have some tea. back from the fields yet. No, I haven't seen him, miss. Thank you, Annie.
you and Michael hiding Brett from me as if he were some dangerous animal. I've seen him staring out of the attic window. My son does not wish to see you. He's been ill, very ill. Can't you understand that? Then why was he walking in the garden last night? That's impossible. It was your imagination. And the organ music? Was that also my imagination? He's disappeared. You all know that. He's probably dead. Then his soul ain't dead. He's out there somewhere. It's him. That's Hex's place. Your crazy brother. Up there. Let's go get him. Those of you who wish to leave can go. <laughs> What is it? You're angry with me. Is it unreasonable for a woman who's come 7,000 miles to join the man she loves to expect him to spend a little of his time with her? You saw what happened last night. Brattling is like a ship that's sinking. And no one can save her except me. You and me, Michael. Or have you forgotten you asked me to marry you? Last night, your mother begged me to leave Bratley. Is that what you want, too? Mother begged you to leave Bratley? Why? Maybe because of Breck. I mean, I saw... Breck! Why does everyone blame poor Breck for everything that happens in this house? I spent an hour with him this morning. But I can get nothing from him. He just sits there, staring into space. A 
shattered mind and a shattered body. Oh, my dearest, I'm sorry. I've been so selfish and thoughtless. I promise never to speak about it again. I promise. Yes, you go. I'll lie down for a while. The horse. Was it Saracen? Yes, it was Saracen. I'm sorry, Michael. Good to see you, Tanner. What brings you to Bratton? One of your farmhands put in an appearance at the castle day before yesterday. With a rather incredible story, Sir Michael. As long as he's up there in that attic, none of us is safe. Oh, please, miss, let's go to Cape Town. I will work for you there. You must stay calm, Lena. We must think. I have thought, miss. I'm leaving Brattling. How far is Grootwood from here? About eight miles by road, miss. But there's a shortcut through the fields. Then will you do one last favor for me before you leave Brattling? Oh, yes, miss. Take this letter to Grootwood and hand it to Dr. Collinson. Yes, miss. God protect you. It may well be as you say, Sir Michael. Superstitious servants chatter. Nevertheless, two particularly brutal killings have occurred. And I'm quite sure none of us here really believe that the stallion was responsible. And who do you suggest is responsible? Perhaps after I've looked around the property and questioned a few people, I might be able to give you the answer. With your permission, Sir Michael, I should also like to have a few minutes with your brother. You realize, of course, Lieutenant, that Breckenridge has not yet completely recovered from the stallion's attack. It is this that I need assuring of, Lady Bratley. That is why I should like to see him when I return from speaking to your field workers. Now, if you'll excuse me, Lady Bratley. Sir Michael. Oh, Michael. <laughs>
help me. Hugo! It's all right. You're safe now. Oh. It's one of the servant oh. girls from Brathley. Let's take her into the house. Come on. Oh. Where'd you drop the note, Lena? There. It's not here. It must be there. That's the only place I could have dropped it. And the trap? Further down. Where did you see the killing, Lena? Down in the South Vineyard. There, there it is. Oh, oh. Steady, that, steady. There's nothing here. I don't understand. Never mind, Lena. Now listen. I want you to go back to Brackling and stay with Miss Mary Ann till I get there. Tell her I'm on my way, but nothing else. Not to her or anybody. Do you understand? Yes. Come on, love. Come on, up now, up. Come on. Nasty business, this, Sir Michael. I thought when that farmhand of yours came here with a wild story of ghost horses and killings, with a mile of track. Turner thought it should be looked into. Good officer. Great pity. Take him away. Now I shall have to look into things myself. Could you postpone your visit, Colonel Pringle, for a few days? Something wrong, Sir Michael? My, my brother, Breckenridge. He died suddenly this afternoon. Sir Michael, just a minute. I'm sorry, Colonel Pringle. Please try and understand. We're all very upset. Can I let you know when we can see you? Certainly. My condolences to you and your mother. Thank you. the Cape Town over an hour ago. Was there anything important? Uh, no, Lady Bradley. May I? Uh, Sir Michael invited me to visit whenever I was passing. My son never mentioned having met you, Dr. Collinson. Uh, perhaps because of the brevity of our encounter. Miss Carew and I were fellow travellers as far as Bradley. She introduced me at the station. It's your other son, Breckenridge, whom I knew. Uh, we met while he was studying at Dublin. I was most impressed by some of his theories. It was kind of you to call, Dr. Collinson. Should you miss Michael in town, I'll tell him you've called. How is Miss Carew, Lady Bradley? When I last saw her, she was walking with her maid in the garden. Then she appeared to be perfectly well. 
You wouldn't object if I spoke to her before I left. Why should I object, Dr. Collins? Miss Crewe. How good of you to come, Dr. Collinson. I wish I could prevail upon you to leave immediately. Come back to Cape Town with me. Until we can establish exactly what's going on here at Bradley. No, I can't, Dr. Collinson. I'm engaged to be married to Michael. My place is here with him. I'm not afraid. Then why did you send me that letter with Lena? Because I thought you might be able to persuade Michael to allow you to examine Breck. If they won't allow you to see him, how do you expect them to allow me? I thought that you being a doctor, they would listen to you. Miss Carew, I sincerely believe you should come with me. I still think you should change your mind and come to Cape Town with me. I've explained to you, Dr. Collinson, but I must stay here. Then stay close to Lena. I promise. with it. Been making it for years. Can't understand how it came off. Who is the customer, Mr. Hill? Cuda. Hmm? Uh, Dr. Breckenridge Bradley, sir. His brother, Sir Michael, brought the boot in this afternoon to be repaired. How can you be so sure this heel comes off Mr. Breckenridge's boot? Uh, easy, sir. Notice how high the heel is. It was Lady Bradley's idea. With the boot on, he walked as normal as Sir Michael. Uh, here's his last. There. Just there. Now the heel there. Yes, you see, sir, he doesn't have a true foot. More like a hoof it is, without toes. But with my boot on, you'd never know. Miss, uh, before I go into town. Don't tell me you're deserting us too, Bland. I'm taking Annie in, Miss. I understand she's not very happy at Bratton. Will that be all, Miss? Yes, thank you. Oh, Bland, by the way, have you seen Lena anywhere? Not since this morning, Miss. Breckenridge Bradley is dead. Sir Michael told me so himself. Breckenridge Bradley is very much alive, Colonel. God knows if it's time enough to prevent him committing another insane crime. How do you know he is? Believe me, Colonel, I do. Very well, Collins.
Michael? Rattling before it's too late. You're in danger. Terrible danger. You're trying to frighten me into leaving. It's a lie. A mad, vicious lie. But the Bratleys are mad. Look at them. All of them died of some sort of madness. That was me. Do you see what marriage to a madman and giving birth to one can do to a woman? Is that what you want, Mary Ann? I beg you, for the last time, leave Bretley. I won't listen to you. I won't! Graham? Yes. Take the other horse out of the train. Right. Thank <laughs> you. 
let her go! The wedding, Mother? Have you forgotten the wedding? No. No, I won't let you. Mary Ann! My way, mother. Enough. There's been enough killing, prattling. I can't harm you. I shall make you very happy. Look, let me explain. You see, I've always maintained that the soul is not something destined for a mythical paradise, but a force 
can be isolated and contained here on this earth. My colleague said I was insane. But here is the proof. Not only one, but many. Not only animals, but human beings. This one Saracen. Poor Saracen. So powerful, so arrogant. Now look at him. All that strength and arrogance contained in this one little jar. This one, Simeon. He called me a loony. This one. It's not true. It's not possible to catch in this house. Isn't it? Michael! Where is Michael? Michael. Michael, my father's favorite son, your bridegroom. Here he is. <laughs> Michael's alive. You're insane. Insane, am I? Insane, am I? Alive is he! I killed him six weeks ago. Two days after you got this letter. Your own brother. Your own brother! In this letter, you said your love goes beyond this world. Well, now we'll see if you're right. At last, I shall have the opportunity see two souls joined together in spiritual love. Think of it, Marianne. Spiritual love, free from the nastiness of your perfect body. <laughs> It was you, wasn't it, Bray? Yes! Ah! Oh! No! Oh! No! Oh! No! Oh! No! Oh!
all over, Mary. It's all over. Thank you.